Galatians 1, 4, the Word of God says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. I'm going to read it again. Let's think about it a little bit, what it's saying. Who gave himself? The one who gave himself is our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. We're, we're delivered from our personal sin, each of us individually by faith in him. But we're delivered also from this evil world. We're living in an evil world. Amen? The world is a mess. And someone was saying in the Parkway service this morning, just a comment I heard in the congregation, that the world is a mess. And it is. The tragedy to me is that our nation is... <coughs> The further away we've gotten away from God and from the Word of God and the Bible, the more I see the world's influence in our nation. Uh, the decisions that people are making should be based upon what the Word of God says. Uh, our founders certainly understood that. That's why we have the Constitution we have. That's why we have the freedom that we have, because they, uh, many of them preachers stood up and, and you know, now it's the time for us to fight for our religious and personal liberty. And, uh, and so the world, as it gets away from the Word of God, gets more worldly and more uh, material-driven and more what's in it for me and what's in my rights and my, I want to do whatever's right in my own eyes. There's a book in the Old Testament called Judges. If you read the book of Judges, you'll see we're repeating it because if you don't, learn from history you're bound to repeat it and that's what we're doing today 21 verse 1 it says and he jesus looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury and he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites and he said of a truth i say unto you that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her penury hath cast in all the living. He didn't know if they were going to be discovered. Was anybody going to find them? Were they going to get rescued? And, and he says to the second man who was sitting there just sunning himself under one of these coconut trees, he was just having a good time, just there waiting. And he says, Aren't you afraid we're going to die here? And he says, No. I make $100,000 a week. I tithe faithfully to my church, and my pastor will find me. <laughs> and Jesus saw it. I want you to see what a mite is. These are bronze coins. These coins were minted in Jerusalem, and they were minted between the years of 39 B.C. to 1 B.C., I am sure these coins were still in circulation at the time uh, that Jesus saw these people throwing coins in. And so that would be one kind, and it was actually minted under King uh, Herod the Great. So under Herod the Great was those coins. Then in Petra, there was another coin mint, minted, and this coin was under Aretas IV Philopatris. Uh, and that was minted between 18 to 39 AD. And when Jesus saw this, it would have been about AD 32 or 33. So this coin could have probably been this coin or this coin, which was exactly thrown into this brass container when they're throwing in the offering. That okay. It's really true uh, that when you trust God, he knows about it and he takes care of you. And for me, it's always like right at the last minute, like just when you need it, here it comes. You know, it's like surprising. You know, I could miss the mail and somebody, could, the mailman would come back and say, oh, by the way, I forgot I didn't deliver this. Just to kind of test me a little bit. <laughs> and it's kind of like that. It's like the Lord knows, the Lord takes care of you. Oftentimes for me, it's just at the last minute. Once in a while, he surprises me. He'll do something above and beyond anything I ever thought or would have ever asked. And he does it at a time I don't expect. And he just God just blows me away once in a while with his goodness to me. And I'm sure he does to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 says, But this I say, 
he which soweth sparingly, and that's the one that's casting seed, or you could say giving, or serving with your time, or using your abilities for the Lord, shall reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not begrudgingly or necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver, and he is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound every good work. God values your gift of time. He gives you your, he values your gift of uh, your willingness to do things for the Lord and just trust him with it. He values everything that you do for him. He values when you are kind to one another. He values when you're loving toward one another. He values greatly when you're willing to forgive other people. Like he get died to make forgiveness possible for us. If we are unwilling to forgive one another, that's a way of giving. If we're unwilling to forgive one another, the way that he died to make it possible for us to be forgiven, he says your sins won't be forgiven. He's like, he gets uh, quite perturbed when we want for ourselves forgiveness or money or health or whatever, and we're not willing to give or to help others. That really upsets the heart of God. But if you want to be a blessing, just be kind and loving and forgiving and gracious toward one another. That really impresses God more than anything. It's your heart.